All right. February 14th, happy Valentine's Day. We're going to continue on with the integumentary system. Uh, go ahead and get out your notes. We're on sebaceous glands. Now, sebaceous glands are the ones that are associated with the hair follicles. If we go back up. You've got your hair follicles right here. All right, with the hair. Here's our sebaceous glands right there. Okay. All right, sebaceous glands, they're going to secrete the oil. There's going to be what helps keep your hair flexible, soft, waterproof. It also helps with the skin. Anytime you have got an overactive sebaceous gland or a clogged sebaceous gland is when you end up with acne. All right, you can also get bacterial infections in there too. White and black heads. Um, when you've got bacteria, that's where you can get the boil or the pimple that results, and that's just uh, a lot of times it's dead white cells that end up coming out from it. Here's a bad case, acne vulgaris, inflammation of the sebaceous gland. Mammary glands. Now, mammary glands are located in the breast. Um, this results from hormonal changes that occur during, uh, after childbirth. There have been known to have breasts located in areas other than chest. 22-year-old woman sought medical care for a lesion in the plantar region of her left foot a well-formed nipple surrounded by areola and hair. Microscopic examination of the dermis showed hair follicles, eccrine glands, and sebaceous glands. Fat tissue was noted at the base of the lesion. Clinical and histopathological findings were consistent with the diagnosis of a supernumerary breast tissue, also known as the pseudomama. You just thought that was a funny word, didn't you? To our knowledge, this is the first report of a supernumerary breast tissue on the foot, except for it does not have the mammary glands. The difference is it could not produce milk. All right, so it has the other glands, but it could not produce milk. And that's an up-close picture of it, the year. <laughs> All right, what are some of the functions? Regulation of body temperature. If you've got high blood temperature signal, uh, high blood temperature, it signals nerves to dilate the blood vessels. That's the reason if you're running temperature, you can become very red. Why? Because we want the blood to be forced up to the, to the outer surface, as far up to the outer surface as possible, so that way the air can actually cool your blood. So those blood vessels become very dilated. If you have high temperature, what happens? You can kill the bacteria. So that's a good thing, right? Right. So when you run fever, should you automatically take an aspirin? No, it needs to do its job, doesn't it? When you get concerned is if it starts running over 101, 102, then you can start getting concerned because it makes you achy because it's doing the job that it needs to be doing. All right, but so many times we all, you know, everybody thinks that a fever is bad, and a fever is not bad. A fever just means you've got an infection somewhere and you've got a battle going on. Okay, if you have low blood temperature, uh, signals are sent to the nerve cells to constrict sweat and blood vessels. Uh, if the temperature still falls, muscle activity is stimulated, causing shivering. So if you have high blood temperature, blood's going to rush to the surface. All right, so it's going to dilate those blood vessels. You're going to start sweating. You want to get the, the blood up closer to the surface of the body so that way it can cool down. If you have low blood temperature, you want to keep it as warm as possible so your blood vessels are going to constrict down. And if you're cold enough, then you're going to start shivering. Right, and remember the erector pili is going to cause your goosebumps to occur. Anybody have any questions on that? Healing of wounds. 
Inflammation. The area's blood vessels become dilated and permeable, forcing fluids into the affected area. This provides oxygen and nutrients to promote healing. So this is why when you have an infected area, that area will turn red. Does that make sense? All right. You want them to become dilated. You want as much fluid up there as possible. Get more white blood cells up there, more oxygen and nutrients, so the cells that are there can do, the, do their jobs that they need to do. Epithelial cells will divide very rapidly, closing the wound. I've got a video. I'm pretty sure I have a link on down lower here where you'll be able to see this. If the injury affects the dermis or the subcutaneous layers, which is down lower, you're going to have blood clots form to stop the bleeding and a scab harden from tissue fluids to cover and protect the area. Fibroblasts are going to migrate and secrete collagen fibers that bind the wound. I'm pretty sure I've got a video link on here. Yeah, that's good. Microphages remove the dead cells and debris. When these microphages uh, remove this, this is where you end up getting the pus, what looks like pus. That's the dead parts of the cells. And, uh, and dead bacteria. Scab falls off. Underneath the scab, you've got new connective tissue as a scar. Just to be able to read it with it. All right. <coughs> Disorders of the skin. I've got some really cool pictures here. This is athlete's foot. Uh, you can tell it by itchy red peeling skin. <coughs> Excuse me. It's caused by fungal infection, and it's agitated by sweaty feet. Warm, moist area causes bacteria to spread. Another good picture of it. That's, that's really gone along a long time.